Welcome back to the Two Months Podcast presented by Sheena Boytruck Real Estate. I'm your host, Joshua Marshall, and uh, my guest early this morning, he's uh, out in Florida. Uh, he is a former head coach, uh, former NHL general manager and president in the National Hockey League. He also just uh, released a book on uh, October 3rd called Draft Day. We'd like to welcome back to the Two Months Podcast, Doug McLean. Mac, how's it going? Good, man. Good. Thanks for having me on. No, no. Thanks for uh, for joining us again. It's obviously it's been a it's been a bit of a bit of time since we had you on last, but um, obviously some exciting news in your world and in releasing a book. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that experience has been pretty good and uh, has brought a, a lot of great conversations, a lot of good memories back and forth. Actually, I was even talking to uh, Jill Berbule when you were doing your interview with uh, Don, Donnie and Dolly. Uh, probably about a month or so ago, um, just kind of how you still support that draft pick uh, many years later. And, and uh, you know, everyone takes some heat at times, but uh, the, the fact that you support him and obviously it's a guy that you know very well and someone I connected with. But uh, how's the reaction of the book been since, uh, since its release? You know, I, I was really, I didn't know what to make of it, uh, Joshua. I didn't really know what the expectations would be. Simon and Schuster were excited about it, so I guess I was. But, you know, it's been amazing. We did the book launch October 3rd, and we've been a Canadian bestseller six weeks in a row. And uh, I know Simon and Schuster is sort of blown away by it, so I'm I'm really pleased, I think. You know, the response has been overwhelming, to be quite honest. And even in the U.S., we're starting to get a little bit of traction with, you know, with the title. If you're interested in hockey and the draft, you know, you'll probably give the book a chance. So it, it's been it's been really positively received and overwhelming, to be quite honest. Yeah, that's obviously a good thing, too. Um, you know, yeah. it, it's in my mind. I um, Is there some excitement that brings back some good memories? Obviously, we were just kind of talking about Gerald Berberle and, um you know how much you you care about that that person and that player um is there anything else in the in the book to you that kind of stood out that you know brought back some good memories of you know kind of you supporting what you uh what you did and who you drafted and either who you traded you know, for and whatnot it's funny you know what it was sort of a it was a it, it was kind of a, a combination it you know, I talked a little bit about growing up in PEI and, you know, starting as a high school teacher and a and a junior or bantam coach and a high school coach and a junior coach in, in PEI and then getting a chance to be an assistant coach in London. And, you know, when I was doing my master's at Western and sort of my it was a bit on my career, but it sort of hit home all my buddies in PEI in the backyard rink and, and growing up there and how far away at that time, uh, you know, my first year in the NHL was 1987, how far away the NHL was from PEI. And I sort of had like great memories, even when I was rereading the book after it was finished and thinking about, you know, all the great times I had with my buddies and PEI and, and then to, dream when I was playing for the Montreal Junior Canadiens, my dream as a 17-year-old, my dream was to play in the NHL. And then my dream changed to becoming a coach in the NHL. So, you know, you're just pretty lucky in your life that you get to reach some of your, you know, goals. So I, you know, that's sort of what I, I get a kick out of when I read, you know, the chapter called The Hockey Lifer is sort of, and I mean, I remember Joshua being down and out in Brockville where you know, I left my boarding house and I had five dollars in my pocket and I didn't have any place to sleep. And I think, oh, my God, I'm 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 homeless here, you know, as a as a 19 year old. So it's just funny how those were the greatest memories of doing the book, you know, my mom and dad and growing up watching me. So, you know, the drafting was, you know, what, what I tried to do was explain the picks. And, hey, my scouts were nervous. When I started to write this book, they were basket cases over what was going to come out. <laughs> and I kept telling them, you know, don't, you know, I, Boydie, who was a great friend of mine, was with me for 10 years. Actually, Don Boyd gave me my first chance in London as an assistant coach with the Knights. I didn't even know him, and he gave me a chance to be his assistant. And he's the guy that really was a big part of my career. But I said, Boydie, don't be nervous. I mean, I'm going to explain the picks. And, you know, that's what I tried to do. And, if anybody took the blame, I took the blame. I'm the I'm the GM. I'm the guy that I'm the guy that uh, that 
has to has to make the although the scouts really make the call you're the gm's the guy you're the yeah. you're the boss yeah and that's the way it is you know no it is it is uh yeah it's interesting you kind of tell that story last night i was uh i was uh you know connecting with a friend we just went for a tea and just kind of a drive and and uh it's been emotional couple of days here and and uh you know I was I was uh watching Ken Hitchcock's Hall of Fame speech I don't know if you get ended up getting to to watch it I think I think you did I think you actually yeah you did cuz you tweeted something really great about how great James Duthie is as a host on steering right. the conversation and all that now I remember now seeing that on Twitter but yeah. uh, and just the hitch comment uh back is just you know how much he loved the players how much the players meant to him and he obviously talked about a player that uh you know, he had in 1982 and then left the team in 1983. And then so many years later, this player had, you know, sent them a letter um, that got to someone in 2016, but somehow it didn't get to Hitch until three months ago. And, you know, that player was fighting through a lot of, you know, somewhat demons and whatnot. And it, and the point of the story is that, you know, the, the how much hockey can help you. And, you know, and, I and you know, you, you and I have connected on so many levels here of what you've done for me and, leading on me when I'm going through a tough time and checking in on me and stuff like that. And, um, and that's all because this game of hockey brings people together. Yeah. I I must've missed, I must've missed something. I don't remember my my time at hitch that he loved the players that much. (laughs) Must've been just, it must've been just my player. Yeah. Cause (laughs) I don't remember a love fest going on with the players and hitch. No, I listened to that comment. I thought, ah, Maybe we're buttering it up a little for the Hall of Fame speech. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. We everyone knows that there was there was uh, <laughs> you know players that that could never could just dream of maybe getting away from them. But uh, <laughs> anyway, you yeah. know what? It's con- congratulations to him. And hey, like when you make the Hall, when you're the fourth winningest coach in NHL history, what's that? Pretty well tells you all you need to know. And he. Yeah. You know what? He had a great career, and I, I last time I talked to him was at the Rick Nash retirement, the Jersey retirement. We had a great chat, and uh, you know, it's so you know, life goes on, and uh, we uh, we we ch- I chuckle about you know all all the tough times. Uh, you know, I really now that I'm retired and and living life, I'm thinking, God, they were they were tough times. It was pressure like you can't believe, and it was criticism and just ripping you and your family and everything being affected by it and dramatically affected by it as jill says as jill says to me um you know she brings up something that happened in our 11 years in columbus and i said what and she said oh i forgot you were you were mia for 10 years with our family by the way (laughs) you know know, so i you know and that was the fun part of the book talking about all the you know the the interesting challenges of being a gm and being a coach in the nhl it's a tough grind as you guys witnessed in edmonton this week it's it's a really it's a tough tough part of the business for both the management i mean firing coaches was a miserable miserable experience and in my situation dave king Gerard galan i was made to fire them by my owner and it really to this day it really ticks me off yeah because it was no there was no and i put that in the book and it was no there was no question i got a phone call fire the coach i said hey mr mack i I don't think we should do it fire the coach that was that was it zero zero conversation and you know here you are you know, and you can't tell the coach that. No, you can't tell the coach that. You know, that's just the way it is. You you have to take the heat. You know, Thank and you. Uh, you know Hitchcock. Uh, I I chuckle when I was thinking about Hitch in the Hall of Fame. I remember going to a meeting with Don Boyd, Jim Clark, and my owner Mike Priest, and I the the decision was Andy Murray or Ken Hitchcock. Those are the two guys I interviewed, okay, when Jawari Gallant was let go. Yeah. Those are the two guys I interviewed. And I said, Mr. Mack, we got to go with Ken Hitchcock. He's won a Stanley Cup. I, both the guys have got good backgrounds, both quality. We got to go with Hitchcock. And he said to me, I think you should go with Murray. That's what he said to me yeah. in the meeting. And then... 
I read for 10 years that I was forced to hire Hitchcock. You know, I'm the one that fought, fought for him in the yeah, meeting. Yeah. But these idiots in Columbus, the writers, oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he, he, he was forced. I saw it written a month ago that I was forced to hire Hitchcock. Yeah. Like, what a joke. Oh. Anyway, that's life. That's yeah. life as the, in the NHL. And you just, that's part of the package. And you certainly don't complain about it. Yeah. Cause well, it's, gr- it's a great job. Yeah. A great job. It is. It is for sure. It's, it's, and there's the, obviously the tough moments. And, you know, like you said, we just saw it this week. And, you know, yeah. we just had Bob Stoffer on earlier in the week. And he had talked about, you know, the charitable work that Jay Woodcroft did with Mark Spector's uh, charity here in, here in Edmonton. And obviously it was Spec that asked a tough question after the loss in San Jose that, are you worried about your job? And then yeah. there's a clipping that the, miss, that the Spit and Chicklets guys posted uh, that, you know, that Jay Woodcroft goes, Spec, I don't listen to your stuff. I don't read your articles and all yeah. that. And so Spit and right. Chicklets yeah. blew that up. And then so Specter saw Spec it. almost, I thought Spec was going to cry when he said that to him, yeah. actually, because he, he's he such a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was <laughs> well, he's a cheerleader when they're winning. And he's mad at them when they're losing. Yeah. I love I love reading spec. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. He goes, he's up and down more than the coach and GM. Yes, he, anyway. he is, he is for sure. <laughs> so yeah, I saw him the other day too walking into the ring. So uh we took a yeah. uh, we took a minor yeah. hockey team to a to a morning skate so they got to experience oh, good. they uh, didn't good. see but uh our NHL news and notes segment is brought to you by Sheena Boychuk. Yes, you heard that last name right. That's Sheena Boychuk. As a licensed realtor, Sheena has you covered to buy and sell your home in this hot market. She also offers home consulting services to help you upgrade your living space. Check her website out at SheenaBoychuk.com and tell her the Two Mods podcast sent you. Realty by design, your design approach to real estate. we like to thank Sheena for jumping on. This is a new sponsor for us. So we're very excited to have her join us here on this Too Much Podcast journey. Another thing before we get to the current events of the of the NHL. Um, so I was listening to Jeff Merrick and Elliot Friedman on the 32 Thoughts podcast that they released on Monday. And Jeff Merrick told a story about uh, Todd Marchant and yourself. Um, pretty much that you, they had a fan question. A guy called in asking about the waivers because, you know, the dot, uh, uh, dot and off, uh, if he, uh, you know, didn't like going, he is on his list. It didn't want, he didn't want to go to two of the, the Anaheim Ducks. So if he was placed on waivers, yeah. would he still be able to go to the Ducks? So the, the fan was asking, does that work still through waivers? And, you know, so uh, Jeff Merrick ended up coming back off after the fan question about saying, you know, years ago when you had Todd, um, you know, I guess there was, I don't know, a disagreement. You can elaborate more on it, but just to the story is that, uh, you know, he, he had a no trade clause, but uh, you could place him on waivers because he had a no move clause. He didn't have a no move clause. And the team that wanted oh. him, he can claim him on waivers or didn't want him can claim him on waivers. And the necessary the part of the story is that you you invented the, the full no move clause because of this in the <laughs> NHL. Um, so do you, well, uh, do you, can you elaborate a little bit more on this story? And what your side here's, what, here's what really happened. And Jeff is always close to the truth, but just a little off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like he used to tell stories and I'd say, Jeff, no, that's not right. I was in the room when that happened. Yeah. Sorry. I was in the room. <laughs> he's great. I love, yeah. I love Jeff. Yeah. he's. A but let, so here's what happened. I, I, I'm going, I want to get better off because I'm in my, I'm, I'm in dire straits to, to fix Jared up a little bit. And I thought, okay, if I get better off, Maybe, maybe I can, I, it, it'll salvage Jared. That was the whole rationale behind the trade. So I called Todd. Todd had, Todd had really ticked my owner off in the lockout. Okay. He said he was quoted in the Columbus paper about, you know, maybe the owners will take the shackles off us players in this, in this agreement. And my owner was ballistic over that comment. He was so upset with Todd. He never wanted to see him again. OK, and so that's the part that was never, ever told. So I OK, Todd Marchand's guy got to do something with Todd Marchand. I, I got to move. Him. So anyway, he's in the deal. He comes into my office. I said, I'm trading you to Anaheim. And he looked at me, he said, I'm not going. I have it in my 
I have a, in my no trade, I, I don't have to go. I said, oh, okay, that's fine. So that afternoon, I put them on waivers because I the money had to be evened up here with Fetter. So what I did is I traded Tyler Wright and I traded Fe, um, uh, Marshawn and it all, it basically made the money. And Boshaman went in that deal too, which is a big mistake. And I, I got, we, he was playing in Syracuse at the time. We didn't know. How. We liked him, but we didn't, we had picked him up on waivers so much. Oh, we didn't know how good he's. So anyway, Todd says he's not going. I said, oh, okay. So I phoned Berkey and Anna. I said, Berkey, uh, Todd Marchand won't go. Um, so I'm going to put him on waivers. You pick him up on waivers and the deal's done. So. Berkey says, fine. So then I'm sitting in the stands the next day. Chris McFarlane, who was my administrative uh, hockey ops guy, comes up to me. He said, Berkey didn't take Marchand. I said, he what? He didn't take Marchand. I got fed off. The deal's done. And he didn't take Marchand? So I'm sitting there with a $3.5 million problem on my hands. I phoned Berkey. I said, Berkey, the deal is you're taking Marchand. Oh, don't, don't sit down. We could get in trouble with the league. We could get in trouble with the league. I said, Berkey, there's nothing to get in trouble with the league. I'm putting them back on waivers. You better take them. So Berkey takes them the next day, and that's in it. So that's when the league came in that summer. The PA lodged a big investigation. There was nothing there. And I had put them on waivers. I had gotten calls from 10 teams about them. It was, you know, so it wasn't, it, I was trying to move the money is what I was trying to do. So they had nothing on me. So anyway, the, then they came in that summer with the no movement clause. So that's how it happened, which is kind of funny, really. Yeah. I mean, I love Todd Marchand. Todd Marchand, I mean, I worked so damn hard to get into it. When I got Todd Marchand to come to Columbus, it was 12 offers he had that draft in that in that free agent period. He left the Oilers, and it was 12 teams that tried to get Todd, and he came to Columbus. So he was really disappointed to go, and it was it was a tough time, really tough time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not easy at times. Like I was around some players this summer doing some uh, some off ice work and then some on ice work, and then just the kind of the yeah. even the pressure that these guys face. Uh, you know, I just re- even remember just being around Noah Gregor and you know twenty five oh. years old. He had a ten or thirteen goals the year prior and no contract. Obviously, you got one with the Leafs, right. but it was just right. You know, it's tough. Guys, guys, it's, really there, it's just it's real tough. It's guys squeezed out and. Some guys watch still thinking they have a lot left to give, and you know, and then guys that have contracts are, you know, even that that's sitting there, they're like, man, I didn't score for six games, and it's it's wearing on them. It, there's the pressure on the player. Yeah, the it, it, it is, and, yeah. and and it's the same in management. And like you, you, we all forget about the scouts, and that that was a big part in the book about this how important the scouts are, the job they do, and the role they play. Do you know how many scouts in the in the off season phone me and say, "Hey Mac, I, I, you know, I, I can't find a job. I can't find a job. You know, there's a management change, and scouts are out the door, and it's tough. And they they don't make a lot of money. They don't, you know, it's it's a grind. And yep. we all forget about those lesser guys in the business who really have a tough time when there's management changes and people and pe- scouts get fired. It, it's really tough. And I had it this summer with a couple of great friends of mine that were, were desperate looking for jobs, you know, and, and haven't found jobs. That, that's really, that's, a, that's the part we never talk about in the game, or the lesser guys that lose jobs. Assistant coaches, video coaches, all these guys, scouts. It, it's a tough part of it. Why don't you think we talk about it enough, Mac? Is it because it's that those in life, those tough conversations, those not easy conversations, and and it and it can bring some, you know, definitely some some pain. Some obviously, it brings tough moments. But you know, yeah. what do you think? There's a trigger to that. Is and why we well, can't talk about it more? Or should we? And we obviously should be talking about it more. There's a there's a real perception out there that. You know, it's it, once you're in the NHL, it, it's it's easy to stay in the NHL. Like, keep talking about, you know, coaches get rehired and GMs get rehired and scouts get rehired. But there's a lot of guys that don't. There's a lot of guys that don't get rehired. There, you know, I mean, if you're a big name and you're you've had a successful, fairly successful career, but you know what? Like I, I talked about it in the book, if if a if a GM is 15% successful in the draft. He's had a good career. How scary is that? Yeah. But the, but the big issue is 
we don't think about the lesser guys in organizations that 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 feel the pain of a GM or somebody getting fired. And they're just not, they're not, we don't think of it because they're lesser. They, they're they looked at as, oh, he'll get a job scouting somewhere else, or he'll get a job, you know, coaching, being an assistant coach somewhere else. And he'll do, but a lot of guys don't. Yeah. That, that's the tough part about it. And it's, it's a business that, yeah, the big boys in the business get paid well. The big, the, the people in management get paid well, but, as you go down the food chain, it is horrendous where the pay scales go to. Yeah. Horrendous. Oh, it's a, so, it's a it's a drop for if anyone doesn't even oh, know. Like, you yeah, know, I'm privy, to, I'm privy to some things, but there's some things I probably don't even know. But, but you know, it's a huge drop. You know what I said? I'll, I'll never forget. I, I was with, working for Ron Caron, St. Louis, and we. I was assistant coach, making thirty five thousand bucks a year. And, and, and I was making 40 at UNB before I went to St. Louis. And I, and I were out for dinner and I go to pay my, my share of the meal. And Ron Cron looks at me, he said, you're out to dinner with me. You will never pay for a meal. I'm the GM. I will always pick up your tab. And it was a great lesson for me. And never once when I was out in Columbus with my staff, I bought every time from, I mean, you know, the team bought, but it was like, you guys are not paying for anything when you're with me. You know, that, that was a small, just a small gesture to, towards the appreciation of these people and how hard they work. That's, that's all it was about, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that to me is important. But anyway, you know what? It's a great career. It's, it's, a tough, it's tough to make the NHL, whether you're a player, scout, whatever you are, and it's tough to stay. Yeah. It is. It definitely is. It definitely is. Coach Rupper here from Two Mutts. Thanks for tuning in to the podcast. Now let's grab a knee. Have I got a deal for you. We have teamed up with Manscaped and we can save you some big time coin this upcoming NHL season. Guys, are your sticks and pucks getting hairy in the corners? And gals, is your goalie still using horsehair coopers? Well, let's wake up. Use the code 2 months to save 20% plus free shipping on Manscaped products. Listen, we all love to score and we all want to win the cup. Why not do it on a fresh, clean, smooth sheet of ice? That way we all win. Manscaped is the only way to go. Again, the code is 2 months to save 20% plus free shipping on Manscaped products. Now let's bring it in. Manscaped on three. One, two, three. Um, you know, we'll shift over to the Oilers here and some NHL stuff uh, before we get you out, Mac. Um, obviously, we touched on it a, a, a little bit there, but uh, do you... Um, Overall thoughts of the of the move. I know we were kind of texting there. Um, you know, you do like the the coffee kind of higher bringing him in, and it sounds you know yeah. it is one game, but uh, Matthias Ekholm spoke highly of having him on the bench and what that could bring for individual players, and and obviously he's going to treat every player differently. But uh, you know, I know that a lot here is the title. You know, he's the uh, advisor to the owner, and you know, and he's on the bench, and he's in the locker room, and he's in the coach's room. Um, so a chain of command could be broken there in, in some which ways, but, uh, you know, regardless, and obviously the narrative is Daryl Cates got his guy behind the bench and Paul Coffey and Connor McDavid got his guy behind the bench and, and, uh, mm -hmm. Chris Knobloch, but, uh, you know, McDavid did speak to the media saying that that's further from the truth. Uh, he was caught yeah. off guard by this, um, your thoughts of the whole situation and where we're at and well, I think the others can get into that. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I know. Uh, Woodcroft a little bit. I talked to him a couple of times when he's in Detroit, just to, because my son went to a, you know a university where he had played, and so we talked about that and those. But I didn't really know him. I, I you know I I know a little bit about of his dad in Toronto and you know the family, but I didn't really know him. But as I watched from afar, not knowing what was going on, I knew it was I I knew it was in, inevitable. It, it was just it was unraveling so bad that they had to do something. They had to do something if they're going to salvage and have a chance to make the playoffs. And, and unfortunately, that's 
what happens. So I don't, you know, Jeff Jackson, uh, in my opinion, stepped to the plate here. You know, he's, he's new at his job, new president, new CEO, whatever he is, CEO, president. I, I think he stepped to the plate. I don't think for, and I listened to him talk. Yeah. There's not a snowball's chance he talked to Connor McDavid about this. I guarantee you that. Yeah. It was Jeff Jackson's call and Coffee's call. And I'm proud of Coff. I was with Coff for a number of years in Detroit. I've always liked him. And he's got he he's got a strong opinion. He knows the game. He knows the game really well. And for him to go onto the bench, never being an assistant coach, I know he was a sk- skills guy there before, never d- being on the bench, I suspect the conversation was, we're in a situation that people have got to step up here and do some really different things. And Koff, we know you're advisor to the owner, but we need you in this role right now. And I, I think I'm looking at this move between Jeff and Kenny and Paul Coffey as being a gutsy move. I really do. Uh, Chris Knobloch has been rep, has a reputation of a good coach in junior in American League. I mean, he, you know, he missed the playoffs two years out of five. He lost in the second round. I mean, I don't think he's lit the world on fire, but you can't judge an American League coach because it's all about who the Rangers give him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I so agree. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't worry about his American League. I, but they need it a different voice. And I know that's a cliche, but I'm sorry. I've been fired this very same way as, as Jay has, except I had been to the Stanley cup finals. I, you know, it happens. And when your team goes South and their confidence is a disaster, you got to make the moves. And I'm, I applaud them for doing it. I really do. So here, here's the thing though, the end of the day, you've been an Oiler fan for a long time, right? Oh, so I'm a Leaf fan, Mac. I don't like the Oilers. No, no, I know. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, but, but, sorry. Yeah. You're an Oiler. So let me rephrase that. You're a Leaf fan, but you're an Oiler critic. Yes. So, so let me tell me when the last time the Oilers had a goaltender that you thought you had a chance to win a cup with in the last 15 years. The only one that comes to mind for me was Cujo because what he did. You know, he stole some playoff right. series. Like that would be the only guy that that comes back. And how long ago was that? It's, how long it's, ago was that? It's several years ago. Several, several yeah. years ago. Like it's, so, you know. So Jay has got. You know, you, you can't survive as a coach with goaltenders with eight hundred and seventy save percentages. No, you can't. You can't. You have no chance to survive as a coach. So you know what? W- with all things said and done. In we've got Knobloch there, Stuart Skinner, Jack Campbell in the minors. Listen, Jack Campbell, I listened to Kiprios talk all year that Jack is going to get paid six million for what he's done here in Toronto. You listen to it, and yeah, I, I listen to it. Yeah, he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid. He's going. He's done a great job for the Leafs. He deserves it. Ba 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 ba. Then I watched him lose to Montreal. You know, with a couple of bad goals, and but he still gets his money. But you know what? That's the chance. But the Oilers moving forward have got to find a franchise goalie. They have to. Yeah. If Knobloch's going to be successful, if all the guys in management there are going to be successful and the coaches, they got to find a franchise goalie. And that's easy for me to say that's harder to do. But that's, you know, like you just said it. They haven't had a goalie you could, Kostitz, what's his name? Kostitzen? Koskinen, whatever the oh, hell yeah, his name yeah, was. Miko, yeah, what are you, Miko Koskinen. What, they had Mike what are you guys thinking about? Yeah. That this guy is going to win you guys? This guy is going to take you to, you know, and go on and on and on. The names that have been there. Like, seriously. There could, there, so, there could be some argument for Cam Talbot because um, he did kick yeah, him Cam, second you know, round. And then Cam, he, was, Cam was really good there. Yeah. But there's no way. And I love Cam. He, was a, he played. He was a teammate of my son's in college. Don't tell me Cam Talbot is a franchise goalie. No. And he's obviously having a good year with the Kings right now, but yeah. know, it, didn't go, a, so, it didn't go so good with Calgary, and it didn't go so good in Ottawa, but some of that was... And he's a great... Players, but he's a great... He to yeah. me, to me, Cam Talbot is a very good goaltender, but I don't see Cam Talbot... 
I and he may win a Stanley Cup in in L.A. this year. He may. Yeah. I just don't. If, but but he's but he's he's a guy that's got to have a very every goaltender has to have great team around them, a defensive team around them. I get all that. But I mean, it, I just think that's been a real that's been a problem in Edmonton for, for ten or fifteen years. So it's the same that's, problem. That'll in be Toronto, the fun right? thing. Yeah, it's been the same problem. Same in problem Toronto. in Toronto. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It, it has been. It's a. Uh, it's not uh it's not easy for sure and I and I agree I think this move with uh Chris coming in and Paul coming in is it's either going to set up their organization to six many great things down the road or it's going to be the demise and the end of the dry settle McDavid era in Edmonton like they have no choice they have to make the playoffs this year they don't make the playoffs this year and if Leon dry settle doesn't sign an extension July 1st and he says, I'm going to play this year out and do what Will yeah. Nylander's doing right now. That might yeah. not be the best thing for the Oilers because, it, you know, the, the, I view this as Daryl Cates has feared that Connor McDavid is going to leave and Leon Dreisel is going to leave Edmonton. That's the view I take. You know, I don't yeah. think it's a coincidence. Like, it was Paul Coffey and it was Daryl Cates that approached Jeff Jackson. So, in my yeah. eyes, you know, that to me says – you know, the thought of him leaving because it's been this long and they haven't gone to a cup final yet. They haven't even won one. That is, there has to be some real fear there. And I get that. That's, you know, there's the pressure and you don't want to lose that guy. Would Connor leave? I don't know. You know, I know he set up roots here. He's built a house. He's, his community work is, is unreal. The work this guy does away from the rink where there's no camera, there's no microphone, there's no cell phone, there's nothing. Like he does these events like six to eight times a year. No one knows about as media, we're not even allowed to talk about it. You know, I sh- like I yeah. can only say what I can say now. And you know, Gene Prince of A says the same thing. There's certain things like Connor will walk up to him and be like, "Hey, you'll be." I heard this, and Connor goes, "You cannot talk about that," and it, and it doesn't get talked about. But, you know, and I'm not you know, just saying Connor does that. There's obviously you know this game a lot. So, You've been around. There's a lot of guys that do that. So, it, well, I, I guess my issue with it is, um, first of all, if you're going to bring in Jeff. Jackson as as an owner, I, I've got to believe there's a little more to it than just Connor McDavid. Okay, and yeah. I, I I I don't blame I don't blame the owner for wanting to keep Drysaitel and and McDavid and doing whatever he can to keep them. I don't blame him for that. I I think that's an astute that's just- astute move. But I also believe he just went through the Bob Nicholson a situation he's gone through a couple of others since he's been the owner as far as president type guys i've got to believe he saw more in jeff jackson than just connor mcdavid no you would hope you would hope for sure i would i will tell you i guarantee he did yeah and you know what i'm going to tell you something what i watched go on the last two or three days tells me that jeff jackson like i loved his comment i loved his comment at the press conference where he said no, I, I didn't talk to the players. And you know why? Because he's 100% right. If you go to Connor McDavid as a GM and you say, what do you think? Do you think I should bring in Chris Knobloch? I guarantee you Connor McDavid's going to say, I don't really want to be involved in this decision. Yeah. I'm telling you that. That's the, And Jeff said that, and people laughed at him. And I'm telling you, he's 100% right. Yeah. Players do not want to be involved in those decisions. Yeah. They do not want to be. I used to talk to Rick Nash, and Nash would say, "Doug, you know, I, I, I don't, I really, please keep me out of this. Yeah. Keep me out of this." Was that they don't want to ter- be in every terms, Mac? Like even player, like player involvement and in getting, you know, if you were if a trade came your way or something you thought of, was that still something that you knew I, that Rick didn't no. want to hear hear about? I would I would go to I would go to players all the time and yeah. say you know what what about what about this guy you know can you give me you know tell me on the QT can you tell me something about this guy and you know but but I and I used to check out but before I'd hire a coach I would check them out but I wouldn't talk to the to current players about that mm-hmm. I would talk to former coaches former G guys that were GMs with them, scouts that were with them. Yeah. But I wouldn't talk to players about a coach. I guarantee you that. So, you know what? I, I, I just, you know, I you you might have have a conversation with your players about the current coach, like Kenny said he did. Yeah. Kenny said, yeah, I talked to the veteran guys. That, that would have been, you know, what's going on with my team here? What's what's happening with my team? I, I don't have a problem with that. 
But I guarantee you, Kenny nor Jackson, Jeff talked or coughed, talk to Connor or Drysidle about the hiring of Knobloch. I yeah. guarantee you they didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. And I and I and I believe that too. And um, and anybody that tells the me out there, but yeah. Yeah. And that's the narrative out there. And I and I'm telling you it's wrong. Yeah. I'm telling you it's wrong. Yeah. And, anyway. and, and, El, and, and Elliot agrees with you. Elliot Friedman. He, he yeah, he's he said it on his his airwaves too that But he's yeah. got to he, but he's got to be a politician. I don't have to be one. No, exactly. you know? that's very very true. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mutz fans, listen up. So SeatGeek is an amazing app that helps you buy tickets in the easiest way possible. So please, if you ever need to buy tickets to any event, NHL, NBA, NFL, CFL, MLB, or concert tickets, click the link in our description and use promo code 2MUTSPOD to get 20% off your first purchase. That's 2MUTSPOD to get 20% off your first purchase. SeatGeek is where it's at. This public service announcement is brought to you by our friends at CDN. Here's a crazy thought. Not all teamwear needs a team logo. Stand out in the crowd and rep your team colors with one of CDN's hockey hats. Listen, these hats are phenomenal. We just got ours a little while ago and we've been wearing them nonstop. You know when you find a hat you love and you just can't take it off? Yep, that's how we feel with our CDN hat. Every time we wear it out, we get asked, where did you get that hat? I know what you're thinking. How can I get one? Cue the details. Shop online 24-7 at www.wearecdn.ca and use the promo code 2MUTS for 15% off your order. Again, that's www.wearecdn.ca to get your new favorite hat and use the discount code 2MUTS at checkout for 15% off your order. Now back to the show. So last one before we get you out, do you uh, do you see them getting turning this around and getting into a wild card? And obviously the you know that would be the first thing you would want to look at. You know if you get into the top three so, in the division, that's a bonus. But do you think they get into the wild card, knowing that you know L.A. won, um, you know sorry Anaheim won last night and St. Louis, so you know those teams are still you know humming along pretty well here, and that's the teams the Oilers are chasing here. I said before the game in Seattle, uh, before Jay was fired. I said it on the Kiprio show. Um, it must have been a week ago or more. I said, Edmonton will make the playoffs. I'm telling you, they'll make the playoffs. They can't be the worst power play in the NHL for an entire 80 games. Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl are going to f- fire it up and get it going. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to, they're, they're too good a team. If this, t- and I still, so I said they were going to make the playoffs then. So I'm guaranteeing you, I, I've been wrong plenty but i think they're going to be a playoff team i really do they're what are they six seven points out right now they're going to make the playoffs if if you know i mean knob has got a you know he's got a big job to do and there's a there's there's some growing within the group here but i think there's a better vibe now and yeah they're going to lose some games but i i, I still think that i still think the oilers will make the playoffs i do yeah. i say in the next so i say that the next 40 games they got to go six and four Six and four, six and four, and six and four. If they go six and four, and like a ten, like they, you got to use these next, like they got to use obviously ten games at a time. But this next, like yeah. they're already two and zero. Oh, so it'd say these, yeah. you know, two like they're two and zero oh in their last two games. So you know, in the next eight, they gotta they gotta you know find a way to to be a have a six and four record and do that again and again. I know it sounds hard, but, yeah. I, but that's typically, cool. yeah, typically the way it is when you look at the history of making the playoffs, if you don't have 20 points at 20 games, there's probably an 85% chance you're not making the playoffs. Yeah. So 20 games, that that looked to me the other day, they got to go 8-0-1 or something to get 20 points in 20 games. But because of their talent base, because of their talent base, it – the, because if they get it going offensively, it will overcome some of their defensive liabilities 
and overcome a little bit of their goaltending. Yeah. So that's what I'm counting on them getting in. I hope Skinner can be a good goalie for them, you know, but I mean, I look at him with an 860 save percentage and then I see him with a 970 the other night. No wonder they won. He has a 970 in that game. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, you know, so I see, you know, because of their extraordinary superstar talent, can that overcome some of their deficiencies? Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I guarantee you, Knobloch will help, but I guarantee you the bigger reason will be the same reason they had success with Woodcroft because McDavid and Dreisaitl led the way. Correct. That would be it. That would be it for sure. That would be it. Yeah. yeah. All right, Mac. Well, thanks for the time. I think this was really good. This is a uh, okay, good spirited and, and conversation and passionate <laughs> one. And, and uh, it's always is. It's a really good. Uh, it'll, it'll, that'll tick some people off. That's good. That's a, that's what you want sometimes. So, and again, right? This hurts. So, um, you truth know, hurt. it, the truth hurts. It, it sure does. Oh, it doesn't ever hurt. <laughs> so, all okay, right. Man. Have a good one. We'll, uh, we'll keep in touch. Take care, bud. Bye.